NASCAR is full of young talent in its premier series. And yes, I understand this is an Xfinity car. I'm sorry. I just, that's the first rookie I could find. But some of this young talent is still developing, like all of our rookies this year. And I would say Eric Jones still has some room to improve. Others are just now, or have been, hitting their stride for a while, like Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, Ryan Blaney, to name a few. But today, I want to shed some light on the little guy. The guys currently growing and developing their talents and maybe some hidden gems in NASCAR's lower series. Lesson from the brain, seeing the beauty through the... What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the video, and today we are going to be talking about top f the top five most talented drivers in NASCAR's lower series. Be sure to let me know down below what you guys think about this list, because I have a feeling some of the drivers that aren't on here and are on here are going to stir up some controversy. So let me know if you guys agree or disagree with my list. Also, make sure to leave a like because it makes me happy. It you know it brings joy to my heart if you like the video and hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see more videos like this and also comment down below if you guys have any suggestions because i'm running out of ideas i need ideas to make videos uh, but anyways let's go ahead and get into today's video quick disclaimer ross chastain is not on this list because i think everybody and their brother that knows about nascar has talked about ross chastain and his talent and he is easily number one on this list but I just want to talk about some people that don't get a lot of, you know, attention and stuff like that. Like, you know, they're there, but you don't really hear much about their performance or talent. So just wanted to talk about some, the little guy, I guess you could say. So Ross, sorry, you're not on here, but you definitely would be number one if you were. For our honorable mentions, first off is Sheldon Creed. He had a solid rookie season in the truck series, but, you know, just doesn't have a lot of, you know, stuff to look at. He doesn't have a really big repertoire, uh, but, you know, if you can build on last season, get a win or two, definitely could be on this list. Zane Smith is another one. He didn't even have a full-time season yet. Ran some Xfinity races for Junior Motorsports and looked pretty solid in there. He has a full-time season with GMS this year, so we will see if he is able to turn some heads and perform well. And this is probably controversial, but Noah Gregson, in my opinion, has yet to really perform uh, better than his equipment. I think he, he's done a good enough to justify being in Junior Motorsports, but nothing to get promoted or really be any in any place better than Junior Motorsports, which is actually a pretty good place. But you know what I mean? Like he, he he's just done what his you know equipment gives him and hasn't really done much more. But he has had a pretty solid start to 2019, or not 2019, but 2020, uh, with a win at Daytona and a solid race where he got a stage win and was up front all day and finished in the top five at Darlington. So if he keeps that up, keeps up the momentum. Uh, doesn't pull Ricky Stenhouse and wreck a bunch of people. I think he will be just fine, and who knows, maybe even make this list. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are out there probably not the happiest with me for putting Tyler Ankrum above any of the, all three of the uh, honorable mentions. He should have been in there. Well... I could agree with you. You can definitely make a strong case for any one of those three being in here above Tyler Ankrum. I'm going to admit this is slightly a stretch. I'm going out on a limb here. And the reason I'm doing this is because he was not even able to start the season. He was unable to start the season because he was not of the age to, you know, drive the truck. And once he turned 18, he came in at Martinsville. He's driving for uh, DJR Crosley, which is pretty decent equipment. Don't get me wrong. That's good equipment. I uh, just kind of mid-tier equipment for that of the truck series and uh, he went out there and drove the wheels off the thing he, ha he ran into some troubles early he doesn't have the best you know results because there were a lot of part failures etc etc that kind of held him back but, but despite this he was able to get a win at Kentucky here is his 2019 stats with one win three top fives and eight top tens considering he ran 20 of the 23 races and about five to six part failures that's actually pretty decent stats this year, he's driving for GMS, and GMS is obviously a much better team with, than uh, that of DGR Crossley, and I expect to see a much better season from him due to that fact. I expect a lot less part failures and having the ability to actually finish races, and I expect a couple wins out of him. So I, I am going out on a limb on this one, but 
um, I do expect that to work out and I think he is going to be a great driver that will develop into a future star. Justin Haley has always been a driver that I have thought to be one of the more talented young drivers coming up through the series. And ever since his days at the 24 and GMS Racing in the Truck Series, I've always, you know, kind of liked the guy. He's become one of my more favorite drivers coming through the series. And unfortunately, due to his Daytona situation, where obviously he got a BS win, um, a lot of people have kind of, you know, put him off as a one-hit wonder who's not very talented because he got a win that he didn't deserve. Well, to me, that's BS. Like... Just because he gets an undeserved win doesn't mean he's untalented. I mean, yeah, just because Austin Dillon has two undeserved wins, he is untalented. But it's it's whatever. It's 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 whatever. But anyways, back to the topic. We can't go on another Austin Dillon rant. Um, but Justin Haley, he had a uh, a mess season. I don't think these stats really pop off. Let's go ahead and look at his 2019 stats. They don't pop off the screen and you know are insane, but they are reputable stats no wins unfortunately the game second at daytona behind his teammate ross chastain which i think attributes to kind of the under the radar because everybody's looking at ross chastain and how he's doing i would say ross chastain is more talented than justin haley but that doesn't mean haley is really not that talented so uh it's just kind of a, a rough thing to be in a teammate of ross chastain but the 20 top 10s to me shows that even though he's in probably just top 10 equipment he's getting the results that he deserves and uh he already has two top tens this season or not two top tens two top fives this season which is half of what he had last season so if he can keep up that momentum hopefully this means we'll see an even better year from justin haley and as you saw on that he also finished eighth in the points so no graphic for harrison burton um because he, he hasn't really had many stats this year but if I made this video at the beginning of the season, I don't even know if I would have put him in the honorable mentions. I was very low on Harrison Burton going into this season. After his lackluster, you know, truck series career, which only lasted, what, one year? Um, I felt that he was rushed. In fact, I even made a video scorning the move by Joe Gibbs. I thought it was just kind of a move that was more based on, you know, uh, sponsorship than it really was talent. Boy, has he proved me wrong. I'm not sure. I don't think he finished in the top five at Darlington. Uh, but after his first five races, he already has a win and four top fives. Completely discrediting that video. That video does not even exist. I mean, it does exist, but it's not even, like, relevant. I mean, at the time, you can make the case. But he has completely shut up the haters. And a lot of people are attributing that to the expanding series being a different style of racing i don't know i don't care i wanted to see him succeed but i wasn't expecting him to succeed and he was succeeding so shout out to him for that um but he is a legitimate championship threat right now and uh, if he just keeps this up i mean he's a rookie maybe there'll be like a rookie wall at some point but if he just keeps this up he's, he's a legit championship threat his future is still very unknown because i don't see any of the cup series ride opening up anytime and i would say if one of the four main joe gibbs ones open up uh, then that Christopher Bell will be filling in that slot. So um, Harrison Burton maybe slides into the 95, but I don't see that happening for at least two to three seasons. So I think he will have plenty of time to develop in the Xfinity series. And if, you know, who knows if he does really well and he gets tired of just sitting. He's only 19 years old, by the way, uh, but he'll be able to fully develop. And if he still isn't able to get a ride in the Toyota and the Joe Gibbs uh, you know, stable, then maybe he looks elsewhere. We'll just have to wait and see. But this beginning, it's only five races, I know, but this beginning is really has completely 180 my perception on him. And if he can just keep this up throughout the season, I mean, like I said, he's just a legit championship threat. So this was easily the hardest decision I've had to make on a list on this channel ever this is the hardest decision i haven't really to this point really done like where i'm actually ranking them but this is a very hard decision and i just want to let you know don't take it personal austin Cindric fans you can make a case for austin Cindric being the best young talent or young driver and same with chase briscoe really chase briscoe just benefited from yesterday being uh recording yesterday probably two days 
uh, you know, posting. But, um, he, you know, the talent that he showed at Darlington, which I'll get into in a little bit. But you can, again, like I said, you can go either way on this one. There is not a wrong answer for the best you know, young talent driver when it comes to Chase Briscoe and Austin Cindric. But anyways, a lot of people expect Austin Cindric to replace Brad Kozlowski in the two car next season in the Cup Series. It's more likely than not, he has ties within the organization and Brad Kozlowski looks like he's out. I will admit, I'm not fully on board with him being in Cup just yet. I don't know why, there is something missing. And um, you know, if he finds it, then I'm on his side, but I'm not quite you know, convinced yet of his you know, Cup readiness. But Regardless, he had an impressive showing in his rookie season where he had two wins, both at road courses, 14 top fives, 22 top tens, and finished third in points. There was obviously the big three out there, which obviously made him struggle to get wins, but that shouldn't be an excuse as to why you didn't get wins. You should be able to get wins despite how good everyone else is. But anyways, he still had a solid season despite that, and his third in points shows that he was really the fourth best driver. He wasn't, obviously, there was no big four, but he was easily... You know, just outside of his, you know, his talent. I mean, he's always just outside the top three, just a little bit slower, like one level down from those guys. So, um, and they had a really impressive season. So that's definitely no easy feat. And uh, if he's able to build on this season, I would say I'd be convinced. We'll have to wait and see. He has had a kind of a rocky start. It hasn't been the best of starts to seasons, but I mean, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. So. Um, solid job so far, and we'll have to see how he does. I'd like to see him get a couple wins at any, something other than a road course. He's I, he's definitely talented at other tracks. Just I'd like to see him get a win somewhere else in the Glen, and I forget what his other track is. But we'll just have to wait and see there. But all in all, solid showing, and we'll just have to wait and see. And also, side note, let me know down below in the comments, do you think Austin Cindric is ready for the Cup Series or not? Do you think he's better than uh, Chase Briscoe? Let me know down below. If I'm going to be honest, I had a lot of doubts on Chase Briscoe at the start of his career. I don't know why. There's something about him I just didn't like, especially the fact that he was in the 98 car and only got four top tens. And he even came from my home state of Indiana. I always forget about that. Uh, but despite coming from my home state of Indiana, I had my doubts. He only had four top tens in the 98 car. His, you know, quote unquote rookie season, he only ran 17 races. But. Um, had an impressive one at the Roval, so I did have a little hope for him, but I still was skeptical. Anyways, we get into his rookie season, and he completely shows me out of the water. He just all my doubts were, you know, blown away because he had one win at Iowa, 14 top fives, 23 top tens, and fifth in points. Like I said with Austin Cindric, you know, he wasn't in the big three, but he was just outside the big three. Uh, you know, getting those results and a pretty pretty great finishes there for Chase Briscoe, but. If you guys watched the Xfinity race, you know, just yesterday, he had, or not yesterday for you, but yesterday for me, um, he had a great performance, a great finish against Kyle Busch, had a really emotional day, a pretty bad day on Wednesday, unfortunately, with his wife having a miscarriage, but a great Thursday, and uh, was able to hold off Kyle Busch. It wasn't like he held him off like he was in front of him, was able to manipulate the dirty air. They were side by side for the lead. And he was able to hold him off. Yes, he had the preferred line, but it's it's Kyle Busch, guys. you got to give him some credit there. Kyle Busch is a very talented driver, and Chase Briscoe is able to hold him off. You just don't see that in the Xfinity Series. I don't know anybody else who can do that, and I didn't even think Chase Briscoe could do that until today. So a shout-out right there to uh, Chase Briscoe, and he is slowly becoming one of my more favorite drivers to watch. Except I, I just like watching all the young drivers, so I don't know why I really say that, but... With one year under his belt at Stuart Haas and already two wins in his second season, I expect great things from Chase Briscoe. And I think anything less than a Final Four appearance for both him and Cendric is a disappointing season. And that's just my opinion. I don't think anybody should have a different opinion. These are two drivers at the top of the sport. So great job, Chase Briscoe. Keep it up. And I hope nothing but the best. All right, so that is all we got for today. If you guys enjoy, make sure you like, hit the subscribe button, and comment down below your guys' thoughts. I will say if I started, like, talking weird in some of them, my computer is acting weird as hell. I think there's, like, an FBI agent on it clicking shit. Like, just now, it just clicked on the, the calendar. Like, it's clicking on random shit. I don't know if I have, like, an FBI agent, you know, clicking on stuff. He might be watching me. He might be watching me record and hearing me right now. That's kind of awesome. What's up, FBI agent? Welcome to the channel. 
Uh, anyways, that's all I got for today. So if you guys enjoy, make sure you like, hit the subscribe button, and comment down below your guys' thoughts. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think I was stretching on this first two? I do think some people might think that. Do you think Harrison Burton should be up there? Do you think Chase Briscoe is better than Austin Drake? A lot of stuff to talk about, so be sure to talk about it down below in the comments, and I will try and answer you to the best. There it goes. My calendar went up again. Bro, chill. Chill, FBI agent. All right, we got it. All right, sorry. Uh, but that is all I got for today, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.